So hopefully by now <laughs> you've played a little bit with variables in uh, P5. Maybe you used mouse X, mouse Y, you made up some of your own variables. Um, and I, I want to look actually at an example. It doesn't really have a lot more to it. This example is just like the one I made previously where I have a circle that's just moving across the screen. And, but, and you can see here, how did I do that? There's an incrementation operation right down here that every time through draw, X goes up by one. So first the circle's here, then it goes up by one. Then it's here, then it's here, then it's here. So that's how you move something on the screen. Now, one thing I did here is I added a whole lot of other variables. Let's have a Y and a diameter for the size of that circle, uh, an RGB variables for the background. So maybe I could do some things like increment the red amount, uh, decrement the green amount. So, uh, and hopefully these are the kinds of things that you've been playing with. And what I want to do in this video is show you a way to organize your variables. And while it seems a little bit silly and premature, perhaps you're like, this is fine. Uh, I'm actually not going to change anything about this program, but I'm just going to change the way it's organized. And this is going to set a foundation for later, as well as like help you to kind of just keep your code in a neat and tidy way, which is something that I'm a little too obsessed about, and that's, I'm, I'm, I'm really working on it. <laughs> Really am, I swear. Okay, so let's think about how that could work. So let's just say for the moment that I have a variable x and it has an initial value of 0. And I have a variable y and it has an initial value of 100. And I have a variable diameter which has an initial value of 50. So these three variables, they, they go together. Right? I'm, kind of, I'm using them for that circle. The x I'm using for the x position of that circle on the screen. The y position I'm using for that circle on the screen. And the diameter for that circle on the screen. And while this relationship of these variables is only something in my mind, JavaScript doesn't care. The computer doesn't care. You can use the variables for anything. I could plug this x value into the color for something and it would work. It might be helpful if I could put all of these together. And there is a way I could do that. I can say var and I could say circle. So I have this circle on the screen and I'm going to call it a circle. And then what I'm going to do is say equals and I'm going to have an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket. So circle is now, what's happening is circle, you can think of it as a container. What I would like to do is instead of having three variables floating on their own, I would like to not have these three variables floating on their own, but I would like to put those three variables inside of this variable called circle. In order to do that, I'm gonna say x colon zero comma, boy, I really hope I'm getting the syntax of this right because this is new for me. And if I get it wrong, I can always make it again. And I'm sure somebody on the internet will tell me if anybody actually watches this. y colon 100 comma, diameter, colon, 50. Now, where the line breaks are don't actually matter. The curly brackets matter, the colons matter, and the commas matter. So you can see that it just like setup, function setup was a block of code with a beginning and an end. Function draw is a block of code with a beginning and end. This variable circle now has a block of code with a beginning and an end. And circle is a container for these three variables. Now, container is actually not a, the technical term for this. And what is interesting about what you have just seen here is you have now learned about JavaScript objects. JavaScript objects. The syntax for this is JavaScript object notation. The way that you create an object, this circle is an object, and that object has data inside of it. It has an x, a y, and a diameter. And boy, are we going to someday get into some really exciting stuff where we see that an object can also have behaviors and so much more to it. But right now, you can think of, there's my circle object, and I'm visualizing the circle object on the screen. I'm visualizing its data. Its x is 0, its y is 100, and its diameter is 50. By the way, I'm not using these terms by accident. What's super exciting about this is learning this. I'm not going to get to this for many, many videos. This is exactly how you get data from lots of things. So if you want to get the, today's weather into your P5.js sketch, 
You might connect to some weather service that's going to send you data. It's going to send you data exactly like this. Weather colon temp, you know, weather equals bracket temperature colon, high temperature colon. So learning this syntax is, that, is going to lay the foundation for just about everything you do in JavaScript. Here is a JavaScript object. So let's now look at how we implement this in the code. So I'm coming back over here. And instead of these three variables, and we're going to find out if I did this correctly syntax-wise, x colon 0, y colon 200. Oops, I put a semicolon there. Comma is actually correct. And then diameter colon 50. And I can put a semicolon there. So this is really one line of code. It ends with a semicolon, but I'm breaking it into separate lines. And I'm going to use P5 editor's auto format, whoops, which uh, you can see it sort of auto formatted for me. And this is sort of like a standard way of doing it. So sorry, that was a bit of a digression. Um, but I did just notice a little bug in the editor, which I'm going to file as soon as this video is over. So x is 0, y is 200, diameter is 50. So I can remove these variables from the top, and I'm going to hit Save. And now I'm going to run this. Aha. Now look at this. We, this is also a key moment, because boy, are you going to have a lot of errors happening when you run your code. So I'm going to zoom into the bottom here. And we can see, what is this error? Uncaught reference error. x is not defined on line 20. So I'm going to zoom back out. We're going to go down to line 20. Ah, x is not defined. Well, x is no longer defined. I didn't declare a variable named x. What I did is I declared a variable named circle, which is an object. And one of the fields, one of the pieces of data in that object is x. So how do I get then that x, which is inside of the circle? And the way that you do that is with something known as uh, dot syntax. Right? When I just had this variable, variable x, I just said ellipse at x. So now, what do I want to do? I want to draw the ellipse at what? I want to draw the ellipse at the circle's x, right? the x inside circle. And the way that I get there is I refer to the variable name circle, and I get to that x value inside with a dot, dot x, circle dot x. OK, let's go back now over here and come down to here. And I'm going to say circle.x, circle.y, circle.diameter, and circle.diameter. OK. Oh, and look at this. I've already forgotten. I was going to almost ran this again. And it's going to say uncaught error. Because on line 22, x is not defined. Because I need to change this to circle.x and circle.x. So I run this, and we've got the same exact program now. Again, nothing new has happened here. <laughs> it's the same exact program as before. But I did do something interesting, which I organized a bunch of variables into something, which leads to me to like a point where it's like maybe this might be useful if I were to make two of them, right? Circle 1 and circle 2. This way, I don't have all these x1, x2, uh, y1, y2, everything floating around. So this way of organizing your collections of variables that are being used together conceptually into an object can really help you organize and keep track of things and lays a good foundation for a lot of things. There's a lot more we're going to do with object-oriented programming later. And it also sets a foundation for working with data that comes from other sources because it will have exactly the same syntax. So as an exercise that you might try for yourself is see if you can uh, take something you're working on, reorganize your variables into these objects. And uh, you know, if you're looking at this one, try to make two objects. Uh, try to maybe t take, make your own color object that has an R, a G, a B, and an alpha perhaps in it. Um, those are things that you could try to do. Uh, and hopefully this video was useful and interesting to you. And I finished recording it. Excellent. OK, goodbye. <laughs>